I'm gonna be doing something in this video that I almost never do, and that's gonna be, I'm gonna talk about someone's work ethic and how much they wanted it in football because people love to talk about that. I usually don't just because, you know, I don't know these people, right? Everyone says Dwayne Haskins was lazy. Well, maybe he was, but I also know that there's plenty of things on the field I can criticize him for, so I only did that. Uh, the reality is though with Russell, there's just so much evidence to support that probably a big part of why he didn't succeed was a work ethic or at least a focus thing with him. So that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit when it comes to Jamarcus Russell, just because again, there is a ton of evidence. We're going to get into some film as well, but I think this is the more interesting aspect of his career as short-lived as it was. For one thing, he actually held out his rookie season, which is hilarious to me. He held out uh, the beginning of training camp, his rookie year, trying to get a bigger contract because back then it wasn't like an automatic value. It was, you can negotiate. He got a huge deal because he held out. So it worked out for him in the end because that was his only contract. So kind of makes sense. And I think there's just a lot of interesting stuff when it comes to Russell and sort of even the off the field stuff. Like this right here is according to an LA Times article. I know it's a lot of reading. I'll read it for you, don't worry. Uh, you know, he returned to camp reportedly 40 pounds overweight. Uh, he stated, uh, right now I'm a little heavier, but I'm not 300 pounds like y'all said the last time because he when, when he was drafted, he was about 260. So maybe he was a little bit heavier, but, but he says it wasn't 40 pounds heavier. And also teammate, Mario Henderson did say, some people say he looks fat. He wears baggy clothes. I wear baggy clothes. Sometimes, of course, he's going to look big. They haven't stood next to him and seen him on a scale to see how much he weighs, what he needs to weigh, or whatever. With his height, of course, he's not going to be 200 pounds. He's not 6'1 or 6'2. He's 6'6 or 6'7. It's all negative, man. Also, to the codine issue. So now you see this quote. This is apparently, you know, he, what he said was he told an ESPN reporter that he did test positive for codine right after the draft. But he also claimed that he had a prescription from a doctor. It just wasn't the team doctor. And Russell also said that he used codine without a prescription but he scoffed at reports that he had a drug problem. He said all the allegations of drug use stem from that positive test, and he has not used codeine in three years. So, you know, a little bit of interesting stuff there. To me, that's why it's important to look into these things and not just, you know, spew them off as the rumors, because sometimes there's a little bit more context. However, there's also some things that even with context is just insane. Uh, you know, there's the famous story that's been talked about with, by multiple sources of apparently before a game, the Raiders coaching staff gave him some DVDs saying, hey, this is a really important uh, game film we need you to watch. This is really going to uh, matter in the next game. And so then he went home. He had the DVD. Uh, he came back and said, oh, yeah, you know, good stuff. And they asked what he thought. And he said, yep, it's it's you know, uh, I like all the plays Run whatever you want. I'll do it. And it was a blank DVD. They just did that to see if he would, uh, you know, if he was actually going to watch it. He didn't watch it, which that was kind of the last straw from them. Also, apparently, so here's the rumor. The rumor is he had to be bribed with McDonald's uh, McDoubles to show up to film study. And it's completely untrue. It was actually uh, Bacon Cheeseburger Juniors from Wendy's. So completely untrue. But yeah, that according to Bruce Grad Gradowski, uh, his former teammate, that's what he claimed that. So, uh, again, pretty interesting that you have to bribe him with food just to get him to watch film. That is not ideal, I would say. That's just kind of how I feel. Also, a PI that was paid by the Raiders. They wanted to sort of see what Russell was up to prior to the draft. He apparently went to casinos every night leading up to the draft, uh, and they still ended up drafting him, which, again, I actually kind of understand there is some really good stuff on his college tape. And honestly, even his NFL tape isn't as bad as I was expecting. I was expecting like a maybe Nathan Peterman-esque run, and that's not really the case. So like right here, we'll start off with this play. It's going to be a cover three zone, and there's a receiver running over the middle. There will be a gap in coverage. That's how this play could work. And as you see, Russell does a very good job of, you know, I mean, look at this throw. Very accurate. Definitely his throws on a line. Uh, there's some pop in that throw. So I can see it. I can see even in the NFL tape, 
there definitely are some positives. This one was the best play I think I saw out of the, I, I watched two games. I'm not going to sit here and say I was, you know, watching every game he's ever played. I paused it here. Your screen is still working. Just got to pause it for the copyright reasons. Can't play it all the way through when it's a broadcast footage. But as you see, right when this play starts, you're going to notice that, okay, nothing is immediately open. He's going to scramble outside the pocket. One of the things that's surprising about Russell is how well he moved. I know he's a bigger guy, but he moved well. He really did. And watch him wall on the run. Going to make a really accurate throw down the field. Yeah. It wasn't hauled in, but it probably should have been. That was a very good throw from Russell. So there absolutely were some flashes, uh, which is interesting. I do personally think a big element of why Russell failed was not just because of his work ethic and or lack thereof, but because he got drafted by the Raiders. And the Raiders were a really tough team to get drafted uh, by. I mean... The receiving core, when he was playing, and I've talked so much about how how important having a good receiving core is, uh, it, the receiving core, according to Pro Football Focus, in the three years he played for them, finished 31st, 31st, and 28th. I do wonder if he could have maybe at least gotten a couple more years in the NFL had he just had been in a better situation. I think it's absolutely possible, and I, I do find that fascinating. Now, uh, I have to be clear as well. It's not like there were no flaws on tape either, just that there were some flashes and you maybe had to look a little bit closer than I think people would realize just given the fact, yes, the statistics were awful, but I think that, you know, uh, if this happened today, I'm sure there would be some people on social media saying, Hey, Russell can still play. He's just in a bad situation. But when you look a little closer, you see, okay, no, there were some just legitimately awful throws. Like, watch this one. He's going to, you know, take the snap. And this is going to be a really pretty throw until he overthrows it and it gets intercepted. So, again, a lot of his throws look nice, but they don't get to the spot that you want him to. He would just whiff on some throws, quite frankly. Right here is going to be another one where it's going to be a uh, similar thing. You see how this play is supposed to work. It's cover one, man coverage. You see the receiver he's going to try and throw to. And at first, it is going to work. As you see, I mean, this is going to get open. But Russell's throw, again, that's just an awful throw. Maybe the receiver and him just weren't on the same page, which does check out given the fact that he didn't, you know, wasn't big on practicing apparently. But at the same time, uh, easily blamable for Jamarcus Russell. And it was some stuff like that. It wouldn't happen all the time, but it would happen far too many times. And so to me, it's actually a pretty interesting example of he was in an awful spot. And one thing I talk about a bit is that when a team doesn't have good receivers, it seems like the fan base is not very forgiving about that. Because I mean, think about it. A team doesn't have good receivers. You don't really see that too much when you watch the film. You know, or excuse me, when you watch the broadcast footage, when you watch all 22, you see it. But when you watch broadcast broadcast footage, which at this time, that's all that was really available. There was no NFL game pass where all the fans could, you know, watch the all 22. Only coaches could. So you only really see the offensive line, defensive line and quarterback. When things aren't getting open downfield, you still blame the quarterback, even if it isn't his fault. But at the same time, just because you're in a bad situation doesn't mean you're not also playing bad. He had a very pretty throw, but that's really all he had. He would whiff on some throws. And on top of it, it was the, I mean, again, uh, usually I don't like to make a big deal out of effort, but clearly effort was a massive factor here. Interestingly enough, he actually tried to make a comeback around 2013, which is about four years after he retired. Uh, at one point, he did get up to 315 pounds, but he reportedly lost about 50 pounds since then. So back to 265, which was around his playing weight. Uh, and so part of me does kind of feel like I almost wish that he got that opportunity when he actually has the motivation now a little bit older, a little bit smarter. And he did have a great arm. Yes, he would he would whiff on some throws, but you know, it was still pretty accurate when he wasn't, you know, whiffing on throws. So I would say that there was some intrigue there and I would have maybe liked to see him actually try to make that comeback because listen, I know the numbers are atrocious. Like the numbers are the worst numbers you'll ever see. I don't think his tape was that bad, but he clearly was never going to be a great NFL quarterback. Uh, or maybe that's not even true. I actually come, come to think of it. I think had he had his head screwed on straight and had he been put in a position to succeed, I think there was a chance for him. I really do. He's kind of one of those busts that I do think that the scouts that got it wrong can sort of forgive themselves a little bit, especially if you're just someone who watched him in college and then thought he was going to be successful and hadn't, you know, never had an interview of him or anything. I think there is some forgiving there, even though he's basically the biggest bust of all time. So 
That's what I think. And I know that might be a bit of a hot take, but I don't think it's that big of a hot take. I mean, you watch the tape. There's there's some good throws there. There absolutely is. Doesn't that weigh to bad? But I do wonder what would have happened had he been drafted by the Patriots or something, right? Like had he been put in a position to succeed and put in the, you know, put with coaches that can actually help him and not bribe him with cheeseburgers to get him to practice, but instead just get him to practice. I think that could have been interesting and could have been great for his career. Or maybe not. Maybe he never was going to work out. But it's it's an interesting, he's an interesting bust. He's one of the more unique busts that we've ever seen, in my opinion, because a lot of the bust, there's usually just, you know, the scouts got it wrong. I don't know if the scouts got it that wrong with Russell. That's just my opinion. That's what I think. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. And also, when I say I don't think the scouts got it that wrong, just, I mean, on tape, I don't think it was that wrong. I think that a lot of it was the outside of football stuff. Anyways, yeah, bye.